If last summer transfer window was the Sandra Tonali saga, sounds like this summer might be the Teo Hernandez saga. Just a few days after Zlatan Ibrahimovic had a press conference in which he unequivocally said, Rafael Leao, Mike Mania, and Teo Hernandez are going nowhere. Suddenly, a couple days later, Teo Hernandez in the Euros press conference comes out and says, I'm 100% focused on the Euros, and after that we'll figure out if I'm going to be staying at AC Milan or if I'll be leaving AC Milan. If I'll be leaving? What do you mean if I'll be leaving? So these are some of the profiles that we're gonna have to take a look at in today's episode of Rumor or Real. All right, so basically the rundown about the whole Teo Hernandez situation is this, that after the season ended, there was some reports that came out that Teo apparently has agreed personal terms with Bayern Munich. His brother used to play for the team. And a lot of reports talked about the fact that a move to Bayern Munich is on the cards, mostly because Real Madrid was courting Alfonso Davies. But now recent reports suggest that Bayern Munich are probably going to find an agreement with Alfonso Davies. If they don't lose that player, they have no reason to sign Teo Hernandez. But then the team that was actually trying to court the Canadian Alfonso Davies was Real Madrid. Now, reports are suggesting that Real Madrid are interested in their former player in Teo Hernandez. And some have even suggested that he could make a move to Manchester City. So while all this news was rumbling, there was obvious that the price tag of Teo Hernandez of around 80 million would be something that would benefit Milan financially. And then Ibrahimovic comes out in the press conference a couple days back and says, hey, these main guys in Rafael Leao, Mike Mignon, Teo Hernandez, they're going to be staying here. We're trying to build a winning project. We're trying to make additions and not, we don't have to make these sales to be able to sign new profiles our accounts and our books look good. This was a significant relief for a lot of the fans because last season we had to sell Sandro Tonali, make that 60, 70 million to be able to re reinvest it back into the Mercato and bring the profiles that Milan brought. But that statement from Ibrahimovic, it made a lot of fans feel better that, okay, it looks like we're just going to be spending this time around, not going to be selling our main players. Which is why it is a little bit surprising to hear this statement come from Teo Hernandez, that too right before the Euros. A lot of, you know, other teams are going to be looking at his performances during the Euros, especially if he plays really well. Now, there are some fans that are going after the management for not signing a renewal for this player. There are some fans that are going after Teo Hernandez for wanting money like Donnarumma, like Chalanoglu. But I think it's important for us to calm down and see the whole situation for what it is. Teo Hernandez, guys, back in 2021, before Milan even won the Scudetto. He was the first one, keep in mind, after the departure of Chalanoglu, after the departure of Donnarumma, uh, while Frank Kessie was still not committing to this team, Teo Hernandez was the first one to step up and say, I'll extend my contract till 2026. He was the first one to actually buy into this project. And one would think that when he bought into the project, there were other players that started signing their contract extensions like Ismail Benacer, like Rafael Leao. And you'd expect that this Milan team would see that, take note of that, and actually consider offering him a better contract than what he has. Because if you look at the salary that Teo's being paid, his net salary is 4 million euros. There are four other players on this team that make 4 million euros. Three of those four players were signed last summer transfer window. The players that also make 4 million net are Christian Pulisic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and Samuel Chukwueze. The other player that makes 4 million as well is Ismail Benacer, who's mostly been absent for the last two seasons. So again, by not offering him a contract extension or having any type of a negotiation of a new salary, you're essentially telling him that we value you as much as we value Pulisic, Loftus-Cheek, and Chukwueze. Even though the other guys have been here for one year, and you've been here for half a decade. And it's not just the years spent here by Teo, it's the amount of mileage and the amount of minutes this guy plays. If you look at last season's stats, he was the player who played the highest minutes last season. If you compare him to the other guys that make 4 million, he was number one right ahead of Christian Pulisic. And someone like Chukwueze and Benacer played a third of the minutes that Teo did and got paid the exact same amount. And the crazy part is, it's not even just about last season. If you look at the last five seasons, the entire time that Teo has been here. In 2019-20, his first season, he had the third most minutes on this team. The season after that, again, the third most. Then the highest amount of minutes played in a championship winning season. The one after that, he had the second highest minutes played. And again, last season, he had the highest minutes played. For about three seasons, we have had zero competent backup players for Teo Hernandez. We have put so much mileage on this player. And here's the kicker. The seasons in which he had the third most minutes played or the second most minutes played, those players that played more than him left this Milan team during free agency. They did not care to sign a renewal with this team. Teo Hernandez is the one who cared to sign a renewal with this team. So the fact of the matter is taking into account Teo's last five seasons, his performances last season where he's had zero backup options and keeping in mind his salary, you can clearly tell that the leader of this team 
in my opinion, the most important player on this team, I put him a few inches above Rafael Leao, is underpaid. Now, we don't know what's happened behind the scenes. There's some reports that suggest that there's some frustration that Milan didn't even talk to his agent or his his, uh, his entourage to talk about a potential renewal. Is it possible that it's his entourage that leaks some reports in the media saying, oh, he might be considering a move to Bayern Munich or, oh, he might be considering making a move back to Real Madrid just to get Milan's management back on their toes and, and consider the fact that they need to offer this guy a renewal and a better salary more than anything. It's possible that they leak these stories into the media, but it's also possible possible that these other clubs are actually looking at his circumstance, looking at his situation, saying you're getting paid 4 million net there, we can pay you a lot more in Real Madrid. So at this point in time, the possibility of Teo Hernandez making a move away from Milan, I, you know, I can't call it a rumor anymore. We have to put it in one of the other categories. In my opinion, seeing the way that Zlatan Ibrahimovic came out in that press conference and specifically came out and said that Hernandez is going to be staying at the club. I think his move away from the club is unlikely. I think this might be a bit of a wake up the Milan management and remind them that you can't just put all this mileage on me, not even have a decent backup options for me so I can actually rest and then say, oh, here's 4 million for you, Samuel. Here's 4 million for you, Ismail. Here's 4 million for you, Christian. And, and Theo, you can also keep 4 million. No, this guy served you for half a decade, won you a championship, played the most minutes. It's time for the club to pay him up. However, if he puts in some solid performances during the Euros and Milan can get anywhere close to that 90 million mark for this player, I think a sale might be on the cards. And you guys let me know in the comment section if Milan's offered anywhere around 80 million euros, 90 million euros, or even more for Theo Hernandez, do you think the club should sell? In the next profile we're going to be taking a look at is Mats Wefer. Now, this is a player that plays for Feyenoord. Milan, obviously, you know, it's been crystal clear how much Milan needs a central defensive midfielder. This is one of the players that fits that profile. This is going to be another Dutch interest for this team. This club has a history with Dutch players. Last season, Milan signed Tijani Reinders, who's worked out to be an excellent addition to this team. I think one of the best signings for last summer, Mercato. And this time around, Milan's trying to replicate that with another potential Dutch, well, two Dutch profiles. One is Joshua Zirks and the other is Mats Wefer. He's 24 years old, had about 40 plus appearances last season, scored six goals, assisted a few goals as well. He was an important part of that fair nude side that actually won the Dutch title this season before. Last season, they finished second. So it's back-to-back -back seasons that this player has actually shown his quality. He's more of a deep line playmaker, so the other profile that Milan has been looking at, the other profile that Milan has been looking at is Yusuf Fofana. When you compare him to Fofana, Fofana is more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. He has probably more defensive qualities, whereas Wefer is one of those players that can maybe even offer you a little bit more creativity compared to Fofana. If you really had to compare the profiles, you could consider that Fofana would be a little bit more like on the Kessi side. He has more defensive quality, whereas someone like Wefer would be a little bit more on the Sandro Tonali side. He has that balance of, you know, some creativity and defensive defensive qualities as well, but not quite as defensive as someone like Fafana. Now, the latest reports suggest that Milan in their communication with Fernud have been told that there's going to be no discounts for this player. I mean, at the end of the day, Milan is not offering any discounts to Atalanta for the departure of, uh, of Charles de Kettler. They can't be expecting, you know, too many discounts from other clubs, especially considering the fact that this player has an active contract with his club till 2027. So he's still got about three years left on his contract. Milan has been informed by Fernud that his price tag is 30 million euros if Milan wants to the player, they're going to have to meet that price tag. Will they be able to lower the price tag for this player from 30 million to 25 million euros? I guess we'll find out. At this point in time, I'm going to call this report possible. I think it can absolutely happen. When it comes to the report itself, I think they're very much real. Is there a likelihood of this player actually being able to join Milan meeting that price tag or negotiating a deal somewhere around, you know, throwing in some bonuses? I think it can be done. I think Mats Wefer is a real possibility for Milan. And then there's Joshua Zirksi. This looks like it's going to be an ongoing saga for at least the next, you know, two to three weeks for sure. Ibrahimovic once again came out of that famous press conference and outright said that Milan is not a club that does charity. The numbers must add up. This was in reference to the 15 million commission that has been demanded by Joshua Zerxay's agent, Kia Jurabshan, who on top of the 40 million release clause that would be paid out to Bologna, on top of the salary that Milan's gonna be paying Zerxay, is now demanding a commission for himself in the amount of 15 million. Now the report suggests that Milan is ready to pay somewhere around the 8 million mark, but the 15 million mark to them, as Ibrahimovic said, feels like charity. So at this point in time, this particular deal is in some degree of jeopardy. Now Fabrizio Romano came out and said that Manchester United have also talked to Bologna about Zerxay. He said it's not a conversation where they 
they are now competing with Milan for this player. They actually were more curious to see how does the release work? What's the timeline on the release? And some other details, Milan, according to Romano, is still the favorites to be able to land Joshua Zirkse this summer Mercato. Now, in the past, we have a lot of the times relied on the player's will to join Milan. It's being said by Gianluca Di Marzio that the agent of Zirkse, he doesn't really care about the desire of his player to join AC Milan. He wants to get his 15 million commission no matter what, and they have no negotiation room on that price, which is pretty insane because the agents rarely ever step in and say, hey, you want this, the other side wants you, you want the other side, but I'm not gonna let this deal happen until I get paid. That's not really a common thing in the agency relationship. Agents are there to work on behalf of their clients, not become the main roadblock in their client getting something that they want. So to me, this entire deal just sounds very strange. I have no doubt about the fact that if this guy sticks with the 15 million commission demand, there's no way that Xerxes is gonna be coming to Milan. So at this point in time, the Joshua Xerxes move to Milan, I'm still gonna stamp it as possible because I think it's still possible. I'm just banking on the fact that the agent is hoping that as time progresses and Milan really stays firm on their non-payment of the 15 million amount, at some point in time, I think maybe he'll come down and say, okay, you know what? Let's do a deal at 10. Because right now in the public sphere, Milan has said they're ready to pay around 8 million through reports. And they probably just wanna lower the guy's demands from 15 to somewhere around 10 and you know, find a deal there. And you guys let me know, if Xerxes doesn't join the club because of this agent's demand of 15 million, are you gonna be upset with the management for not signing him and not paying that 15 million? Or you do think that that commission amount is an unreasonably high amount to demand? Well, there you have it guys. Those are the profiles we wanna take a look at today. Today's video was honestly more a priority about Theo Hernandez. His departure would probably be the biggest loss that Milan has had in over a decade. Uh, Donnarumma wasn't as big a loss, neither Hakan nor Sandro Tonali. I think it would, this would be more compared to that Ibrahimovic, Thiago Silva departure back in 2012, 2013. At this point in time, you just hope that it's a ploy by his entourage, by the player himself to actually get himself paid a fair value market amount of salary. And looking at the entire situation, the departure of Tonali last summer in Mercato, I really hope Milan's management maintains their intelligence and abides by what Zlatan Ibrahimovic said in that press conference. And as always from my side, Forza Milan, grazie mille, ciao a tutti.